Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the two against the Overlord campaign. In real life it has been a while since I touched the game, had a lot of other things on the plate, so we're coming back with Operation Winter Hole, where we need to neutralize a target. Uh, we're looking at uh, supplies and intel. We're doing reasonably well and I got a favorite team here. I need to get you properly colored. This is too white for my taste. Thank you. Very good. So we're going to run with a Hawkbite and Spectre as a team. We got Implacable and XQ6. And we got Redline and Trojan who are still joining us. Shotgun, uh, two assault rifles, heavy uh, weapon, sniper. We got a little bit of everything plus a nice little mixture of items including a frost grenade, two mimic beacons, and yeah, a lot of fun. I brought the skull jack with me because we still technically have that objective open and it appears to me that it is a good time to use it. Uh, on which territory are we fighting? Let's just double check. Shadow Maiden, okay. Now we may be taking a battle scanner. Hmm. You know what? Let's sacrifice a tiny bit of damage and see if we can squeeze in a battle scanner. Did I not build a battle scanner already? Or did we simply not research them yet? Okay, that's strange. Okay, so it's not going to be a battle scanner. We just need to play it by ear and use Hogbite as a living mimic beacon. Well, the assassin is not that much of a problem if you do have parry. Famous last words. Let's get into it. Good, jumping off of the Sky Ranger. Hogbite immediately gets a focus and look at that. We got beautiful... Uh, uh, 17 hit points but we'll need that because a triple elite specter <laughs> okay well 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 how about we're starting to scout good move up here move up there Uh, we do have teamwork if needed. I don't want to go too far. This is as far as I want to go. And Sniper is a fantastic position. So all we need to do is get the dark VIP there and get out. Onward. Hogbite leads the charge. And uh, that is a great example of uh, bullshit. Already there. Haven't even seen uh, the uh, the civilian, but of course we're triggering it. Nice. Well, let's make sure that we're standing safe and secure. Cool. Well, that could have been a bit better. On the flip side, we can't lose concealment twice. And we still got concealment up here with our sniper. Remember the proficiency classes keep concealment. Um, Hogbite potentially triggers something. No. Interesting. But as you could imagine, we're slowing down a bit. Not drastically, but a fair bit. On your order. Will do. Over there. And 
XQS6. Again, I only want to position myself in locations where we already know that no enemies are. Uh, I don't need to brace, we already got that, so we're good. Okay, soon we can grapple over. Hawkbite moves in, and finally we're triggering something. That infamous Spectre team. It's by the way, a Spectre Prime. Not only normal Spectres, interesting. Question is, do we do we want to waste our one freezing grenade lawn, um, and launch that against the prime? You know what? Why not? That will essentially nullify the prime. We got some teamwork over here, okay, cool. Absolutely. Moving into cover. Nice hit. We're definitely going to uh, kill of that one Spectre, but before we're doing that, Hogbite needs his uh, his Fury, and of course, we're triggering another pack. What do we have here? Okay, in order. To salvage that situation, we're going to use our teamwork. Hawkbite is back in action, and we are killing that Spectre with a nice little shot. Weapon Specialist comes in handy. And death from above. I don't even know how she made that shot, but I am consider consider me seriously impressed. Is that a Viper Prime? Did it say Viper Prime? Viper Prime. Okay, which means uh, it is going to have a reaction once we're hitting it. That reaction triggers Blade Storm, and that Blade Storm will kill it. Normal Vipers uh, would be a problem because Bind is the only or one of the two only abilities within XCOM that does not uh, trigger Blade Storm. It either prevents it or is happening before. And the other one, in case you are interested, is the Lightning Field of the um, of the Sector Pod. Nice shredding. Good, let's just get the thing down. Alright, doesn't matter, we can continue. Lots of 60% shots that are missing. We'll just do another parry. And since uh, the Spectre isn't shooting back, we might as well just move up and try to hit. 
did not hit as well but we got another hair trigger I was about to say with all of those shots it was very unlikely that none of them would hit cool time to do a bit of regrouping really and the way that I would want to do that is moving up haven't found anything I seldomly use run and gun kind of in advance but I do have the feel a feeling that there might be another pack and if I would have been right, we could have uh, taken a shot. I was wrong, uh, fortunately, because that means we don't need to deal with anyone who's ambushing us. Out. Move up, take the loot. Double Alarium Core, that's good. Okay. Continuing to move up. It was just barely not far enough for grapple. All right, and we're continuing to move in. Sometimes that uh, these double moves aren't the worst idea. I'm leaving the front line on Overwatch. Not that Hogbite is really going to do much with this auto pistol, but I prim primarily don't want him to trigger anything else, right? This will likely trigger something. I'm okay with it. Hmm. Apparently it is simply triggering that we know where the I'm on it. dark VIP is located. I'm going. Moving to designated coordinates. Tired of waiting Good, solid position with our team really. I'm wondering. I think this should not trigger anything. I can hear battle music, so there is an implication that there might be another pack. Okay. Let's hope that the pack triggers itself so that we can. Start the fight. Unfortunately, that's not the case. The Advent Captain nearby would make an ideal target for the Skull Jack. Well, well, well. No direct line of sight. We're moving up, tiny bit. Lanza takes a nice little axe. And we might be able to kill him. Nope.
Oh, there's a tower up here. Okay, good. Well, good to know. I wonder how we can see that tower, but not be able to to just shoot at it. Good mimic beacon. Um, could move to here. Okay. That's by the way where the frost bomb would have uh, been very, very helpful. Okay, this has turned uh, from, yeah, it's going to be fine, to, nah, not really. Another Mimic Beacon. Might be another the worst solution. That will mitigate a lot of damage in case you wonder why there isn't any reaction from the Archon. It is because we are uh, we are not in his sight. Cool option would be to invert, basically get us out of trouble. <laughs> Let's do that. And then the Archon needs to deal with whatever bullshit is happening back here. It's interesting how he uh, solidly ignores the Mimic Beacons. There we go. Uh, I hoped that that would have been the kill. I was hoping that we, he would hit, that way the Mimic Beacon would have survived and said Archon wouldn't have gone for Hogbite. We need a dodge now or a miss. That's what you get from messing with us. Let's kill this guy. Okay, very nice. A little bit of... Um, a little bit of uh, maximizing our actions here put 
parry. Alright, be careful. Got another turret up there. The Archon King remains a problem. Ogbite could run. But we're very far away from Implacable. Good, I think it's fair to say we need to hit the Archon uh, King first. Good, that was uh, my preferred solution. Mainly because we can, rel with relative ease, hit him uh, during his flight pattern. That will mean zero damage and wasted action from him. Free action just in case he comes over here. We gotta be action efficient now. And that includes just killing enemies. Okay, we could deal some more damage to the Archon King without retaliation. Although, not 100% sure, uh, to be entirely fair. Um, I know that the Archon King cannot see us now but an explosion would definitely change that could also just kill that turret here which would be a safe bet the reason why i'm not using parry at the moment is the archon does have devastation and that's basically blazing pinions on steroids. And I don't want uh, Hopper to be caught in it. I'm not sure if you can parry it. Yeah, this could be a good hit with burning. Together deals extra damage. There is Devastate. Just like that talked about. Going to deal damage. No way around it. Oh yeah, oh nice. Finally we can frostbite him. There we go. Now we need to continue focusing on the Archon King. Reload it is, just to be action efficient. And that's really, really good damage. That including, as you can see, the explosion here will suck big times. hit there is a spark back there
good. That will be blocked. Unfortunately, the explosion will happen, so we're going to take damage. So I think with the alien ruler and that very weird setup of the map, really, it's not a matter of whether or not uh, damage happens. It's more a question of uh, how can we survive that mission well. On the flip side, we got the Archon King down. to insta-kill this. Look, and once we're at it... Just wondering... We do not have blue screen rounds, but we do have extra damage against uh, these and I think shredding as well. No, we don't. So maybe the, uh, maybe the actual damage would have been better. Adrenaline rush into healing ourselves into hitting the Archon it all will make sense in a second I want to set up the Archon uh, for a chain kill good that will reset with death from above Could move over, potentially not worth it though. Gotta be a bit more careful with uh, Hogbite because clearly he's currently not in the best shape. Out. Prepping for the next few rounds. Just getting the mech down. Air trigger will allow us to uh, school jack next turn. And Spectre is just overwatching. Very good, end of turn. Good, this is where I'm becoming a bit greedy. Reload into school jacking. And the reason why I'm saying a bit greedy is we already got the Archon, so I wouldn't need to do this, but I. I feel it's cool to progress the storyline a bit more. So I even got some intel out of it. So we're now dealing with this codex. Good. 
data. Understood. Weapons hot. We've got our target. Good. Now is the right time to get into position. And I think the game sort of didn't like it, so let's restart and see if I can fix it. Okay, replayed the exact same turn. This time the codex spawned on the other side. Interesting. Basically right there. So how about... We're just putting it into invert. And how about I'm going. we're just going to go down and kill it with a sniper shot. Good. As I was alluding, I'm getting a bit, uh, say, more greedy with our plays. We want it all. We want... The Codex, uh, we want the Archon King, we want everybody killed, and we do not just want to kill the Dark VIP, but we instead want to uh, rescue it. Hogbite begins to carry the VIP. Trojan joins and soon reinforcements will arrive, but that does not mean anything for us. At this point, we are well advanced. So next turn we're going to be out of here. There are the potential reinforcements. Good, that was much closer of a mission as I was anticipating, specifically Hogbite uh, was caught very much off guard. But with the repositioning that worked very well, unfortunately he then got not only hit but crit uh, despite having uh, a more than twice more than 50% chance to first deflect and then reflect. Uh, that really was unfortunate but uh, luckily we do have sustain on him so no harm no foul he is a machine can't be brought down by conventional means and 12 days is not too bad the reason why we only get 12 days is because we had charges on our medkit uh, left over and in the proficiency classes one cool feature is that every single charge uh, that is left over reduced uh, the reduces uh, the time uh, that they need to spend in the sick bay which is exactly why i did not heal got ourselves an archon uh, king's autopsy on your order i can begin conducting an aliens are relaying a form of encryption good and that will uh, that will be our next big target. Also, I worked against the Avenger, uh, against the Avatar project, so this mission was wildly successful. Two Avatar project reduction, um, storyline continued, uh, we got Intel plus uh, a lot of supplies, and uh, we got on top of that the Archon King, which is pretty neat for one for one little uh, mission so 
Got a nice little gatekeeper autopsy here. We're not really working with psionics at this point. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. I have come to suspect that this Wow, and we have not yet gunned the trooper. That explains why I didn't have, have uh, why I did not uh, have the battle scanner. So we definitely should have a battle scanner in this by this point. What a nice little defense matrix. Proving ground, resistance comms. Research is proceeding as what is missing? Yeah, alien encryption to build the shadow lab. So that's going to happen next. The outcome of this research can only further our advances. I have come to firmly believe that Dr. Good alien encryption. Then we can do the shadow lab, and then afterwards we might want to do um, psionics. I don't know how Tapcat feels about it, but. I will at least bring it up as a suggestion. Good, and I think. What else do we need here? Honestly, none of that really bothers me. Icarus armor, yes, please. We got plenty of cores. So let's get experimental heavy weapon. And we very much skipped the bolt caster. Okay, cool. Just double checking is it was there anything else? I mean we can build a couple of nice war suits. They aren't bad at all. Got a facility lead, which is always helpful. We currently have one open facility here. I don't think that the Avatar project at the moment is a big problem. Uh, so let's continue with maybe tactical analysis. Um, or maybe we're just going to go to South America because Tepcat started there. <laughs> I think our tactical uh, strategy layer could be a tiny bit more aligned. I'm not saying it's bad, but uh, we could be even more efficient. Good, we can now build a shadow chamber. And we don't have enough valerium for, uh, for that. Knowing that let's start with the basics. Good. Shadow Chamber definitely functions well down there. I think we would want to visit the black market for once. What can we sell? They want alien alloys. That's actually an easy way of uh, getting money. So 330 here. I like to keep the cores. Stun lances are used for what exactly? Spider suits, okay. Viper uh, corpses for nano med kits. Yeah, but we can sell a couple of them. I'm going to use basic stocks. I'm going to use that many trooper corpses. Certainly not going to use that many Advent rack uh, uh, berserkers. Good. So that's the start. What else can we buy? 
exterior conditioning is supremely good. And we got a new target, which Tepcat can soon work with. Um, but we also do have money, so let me build up a couple of things. Shadow Chamber, yes, okay, thank you. Got more supplies, so naturally I'm thinking about Guerrilla Tactics School. QCP assault drills might be a good idea. We've almost purchased everything else. I don't know about the Reaper one. I'm not using the Reaper in this playthrough quite a lot, so I think we're okay. Got superior speed here. I would leave it as that. Where is Trojan? Uh, who's our other frontliner? Or um, advanced speed is good here as well. Sounds a little like German. Now we don't have the automatic replacement, that would uh, that would not be good. Our Reaper has nothing at the moment, so might as well give them superior conditioning. Just in case they are ever being caught out. Okay, we got most of it. Let's double check what Tapcat is up to. So we could get a Protect the Device and that stinks as a mission. We could, uh, that we should potentially counter that. Signal jamming is bad. And they are lost, so that's an easy, easy mission. So yeah, if I'd be him, I would just simply do that, plus it's Intel. That's a free mission right there, but he might uh, decide some, uh, to take to take on another mission, which is totally fine. We very soon are going to have a promotion here into the first colonel, which is great. Uh, what else would we have? Ah, we we don't see the individual uh, bonus uh, bonuses. Good, fantastic, very well. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, two against the Overlords is, two minds against the Overlords still continuing. And it is difficult. I like it. It is not too difficult, but it is a refreshing pace from some of the other campaigns that I am playing. So if you enjoy XCOM content, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. You know that uh, it helps the algorithm and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.